So we're here with Sam from Landvolt, who's the largest builder in the metaverse. Super excited to have him here. Hey Sam, welcome. Thanks for having me, man. Just wanted to find out a little bit about you, uh, Landvolt, what's going on, and how you see the metaverse. So Yeah, so we, um, we're basically a construction company in, in the virtual world. So we have two, two sides to our business. One is the creative side, where we, are, we have 120 full-time designer, game developers, builders, um, who are able to take projects from an idea all the way to execution. So we help big brands like Mastercard, Heineken, Red Bull, uh, but also government like Abu Dhabi, for example, to create a presence in, in the virtual world. And then we have the technology side where we build infrastructure to support and accelerate this creative work. For example, analytics. So we're able to measure what's happening in the whole experience. We have a monetization SDK. We're building a protocol to deploy interoperable content. And we're also working on an AI generative tool to build content faster. So that side actually reinforces everything we do creatively and takes our technology to market. There's a lot going on there. Um, can you tell us what you're doing with Yas Island at the moment? Yeah, so we're basically rebuilding um, the whole of the island, so the different components. So there's Yas Marina Circuit, there is SeaWorld, and there's a few other you know, locations in the metaverse. So this, this started with the Sandbox metaverse, um, and then Yas Island actually wants to do, do that across platforms. So there's a project happening in Roblox, there will be a project that happens completely standalone. So it's a very long-term project with a, a lot of different stakeholders involved. And you just recently moved to uh, Dubai. Was it was that part of the reason? And you saw good opportunity in the 100%. region. Hundred percent. Well, mainly we saw a big, big opportunity in the region. Right. The the government has a very clear mandate here to dominate the metaverse. Forty thousand jobs to be created. Uh, I don't know how many billions of dollars you know added to the to the GDP to be driven by the metaverse. So we just felt like this was the the epicenter of innovation for everything metaverse. We already have a few clients here. So it just made sense for me to come here and be where you know, in the fast waters where, where the action actually happens. And we're actually bringing people from our team and hiring locally now as well. Amazing. Saudi's obviously building a lot of me mega projects. Um, you know, do you see this as a good opportunity for them to get involved in the metaverse? Saudi's a little bit behind, I would say, on crypto, but like, you know, can quickly catch up here. Yeah, I've been learning a lot about, you know, what's happening there with, um, with Neom, with the new uh, downtown Riyadh. I mean, the project there just just insane, right? In terms of the scale of it, the ambition, I, I love it. I think this is the this is going to be the perfect playground for for all this project to also have a digital twin and and be truly you know connected. Um, I think you know I, I see where we are now in the UAE as a as a stepping stone um, to be able to tackle those projects who are going to be very very long term. On the negative side, like uh, property prices in uh, Metaverse are down 90% uh, you know, over the past year. There was a lot of hype, you know, um, but so physical properties are probably off 30%, except for uh, in this region, right? But globally, they're off about 30%. You know, do you see them recovering? And also, what about the rental yields? They're still high, right, in the Metaverse? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, it depends on the platform. We have platforms where it's probably more like half than 90%. Um, because some platforms have still developed, there is more use case, more utility. Uh, so even though the price you know, of Ethereum kind of came down and took the property price with it, there is there's still um, an, a niche audience that is interested in those, in those properties, still building and still delivering value. Um, we're still getting about 200% yields year on year on the, on the land. So you know, it's still a very recent market and um, for brands who need to be in a specific spot, they are they are willing to pay. There's no there's no alternative. You can't just move to the next next city or next uh, next world. So we still you know see that this is an important part of the ecosystem. Even though there's also platforms now that do not rely on land, right? So it's not going to be it's not going to be that every platform needs land. I think it's going to depend on the on the use case. What are the major sort of platforms? Is Sandbox, Decentraland, Roblox still? Or yeah, so this pretty much are the same. Uh, yeah. Sandbox actually just uh, just invested in our company. We're still the largest on builders. Thank you. Still the largest builders on the Sandbox. Uh, about sixty people dedicated to the platform. So you know, there's a there's a clear use case for the Sandbox. I think there are other projects that are looking maybe for something a bit more realistic, maybe with a bit more control or more advanced game mechanics. So new platforms are popping up to satisfy different needs. I think it's going to be a bit like social media where you'll have a bunch of dominant platforms, but you also have more niche platform, one focusing on, you know, 
short form video, the other one is more text, the other one is more music. I think the metaverse is gonna be gonna have the same dynamics. You'll have more than one more than one winners. Um, but the challenge is they still need to all kind of communicate. And this is why we're building a, a protocol to power interoperable content. And if brands want to come in, basically you're a one-stop shop to launch, launch into the metaverse. Yeah, we've done over 200 projects yeah. now since 2021. Um, so it starts with an idea, you know, a brand wants to do something. Generally, we try to get like, why do you want to do it? So it could be to increase sales or to build a community or maybe just to increase awareness. Whatever the reason is, we then tailor the build based on that goal. And then we have a creative solution team who brings the idea to life, creates a great proposal. Uh, we have people from the largest you know, agencies that know how to speak the brand's language. And then it goes off to delivery with our 100 plus builders. Um, we assign a small team, of course, not everyone works on every project, and then gets it implemented in the platform of choice. And as, as we do that, we also plug our technology. And this is really the key part. The, the key differentiator of Landvolt is, is the tech, right? We think that um, <clears throat> building obviously is, is difficult, but in a world where AI is kind of taking over creative skills, you know, the tech is the real differentiator. So we have our analytics to measure success. We have our monetization SDK to drive revenue. We have Matera, our protocol, who is making that content compatible with other builds in an interoperable manner. Um, and so all of this is deployed by default in the content to make sure that um, we're able to take our, our technology to market and drive more value for the clients. Yeah. Making money is obviously a good way to uh, get adoption, right? So if basically was it, I have a new developer, I'm a new developer and I'm putting up a new building in Dubai or Saudi, um, what's the attraction? Like, why would I come to you? Um, you know, is it for pre-sales or is it for um, you know, an experience? Yeah, so I think there's two use cases for real estate specifically. One is before the building is actually built, you're able to showcase it to investors, to future clients, to maybe future tenants in a way that you can't do just with a picture or video. Um, instead of just having a render that is a static render, you have a playable version of your building, right? So you can use an avatar, you can literally go on every corner, like you, as a client, you decide where you want to go, you can touch things, you can see materials up close, maybe you can even see the view. Um, and then, you know, you, it's more immersive, it's more interactive, and uh, it gives you a better idea of what the, the outcome would be like. So that generally would help with driving sales, or at least driving interest. So that's part of the, the pre-build material uh, marketing, right? And then the second one is more of a digital twin. Once the building is up, you can actually, once you have the 3D version that is exactly to the right dimension, you can use it for simulations of electricity consumption maybe, or how water is gonna flow through the building. Um, you know, you can simulate what happens if, I don't know, one, you know, if, if you put a, um, a certain activity happening in, in one of the floors, um, maybe you can see how the lifts actually behave. So you can actually drive real simulations by programming, you know, um, actually what, what's happening within the building and, and being able to simulate uh, um, uh, things that may be useful to, to actually run the building. What about the governments? <clears throat> Obviously, it seems like a great way to uh, generate tax dollars if they're creating digital twins of the building. Was it, um, you know, as you see every building getting, every new building getting, you know, um, being put in the uh, metaverse or putting it as a digital twin and that generating tax revenue? I think there would be different ways probably for the government to, to figure out how to monetize this. This is, this is quite early, but it's definitely a, a good opportunity if you imagine that the government kind of owns the map, right? The virtual map of that, that metaverse. They're able to issue licenses or maybe they can create, you know, the equivalent of free zones to, uh, for every business to, to have a presence there. And because there's a, a limited amount of spaces, you know, those businesses have to pay to, in order to be able to, to build their digital presence. So there will be ways to do that. There will be ways to take revenue share on, on revenue. There will be ways to put virtual billboards in front of traffic. That's something that our technology supports. So just like in the real world, you know, as long as there is traffic, there are people, there, there are, there's ways to monetize that. And if you think that, you know, in Dubai, I mean, how many people are here, right? A couple million people. Mm -hmm. um, you'll be able to basically showcase Dubai to the rest of the world, right? Digital tourism. Not everyone can go to the Burj Khalifa. Not everyone can, you know, 
um, go to the underwater restaurant at the Atlantis, you can have that experience in a virtual way, which doesn't replicate or replace the real one, but it might give you the idea to actually see it in real once you've seen the digital version. So I think you know, it's, it's perfectly in line with what Dubai is trying to do to, to always be first, to always be the best and have the most amazing experience for people who live here. Now they're able to showcase that to people who are not, have not been here yet. So AI is massive thematic for 20, uh, 2023. Was it, uh, we are living like yeah, massive disruption. Uh, you've also uh, started a new uh, project inside uh, Lambo. Yep. Uh, can you just tell us about that as well for, with the, on the AI? Yeah, I mean, we, we see generative AI as you know, potentially replacing, eventually kind of putting us off business if, if, if we don't do anything, right? Because you know, the creative skills used to be the ones that humans were good at. And now we see that with, with mid-journey, with chat GPT, um, actually generating you know, 3D content is, is, is not far off what we can already do. So we have to adapt that technology, um, otherwise it's a risk for us to, to, to be put out of business, right? So instead of that, you know, we, we are building our own tools to be able to build faster. So we currently at the prototype stage, but we have a tool that can prototype a 3D environment about 30 times faster. So yeah. instead of doing a, a project in a month, you can do it in a day. That's, that's the goal. Um, you still need humans, obviously, to polish it, to make it unique. But starting with templates of content that already exist, you can you know, build a, a stadium a lot faster because all stadiums are pretty much the same. And then you adjust it. Or a concert venue or even a building right, that has a certain number of floors, a certain number of windows. You can use procedural generation and generative AI to get 70% of the work done like that. So that's how we see the future of Land Vault is, is leveraging those technologies to build faster while still adding our unique touch, obviously, um, and then plugging it on the top of the, of the infrastructure. So that product should be ready in, in 2024. Um, and at the moment, it's just re you know, really exciting to bring another product to market and help democratize the metaverse. Um, what advice could you give uh, sort of, um, entrepreneurs for, uh, you know, that want to get into the metaverse? You know, maybe it's their brand. Um, I think at the moment, it's really about you know, trying to figure out how to create real value. Last year and the year before, we've seen the, a, a big you know, spike of interest in the metaverse. We went through that uh, peak of inflated expectation or whatever it's called in the cycle. And everyone wanted the metaverse. Every brand was calling us and they didn't have a real reason why they wanted to be in the metaverse. They just wanted to do it for hype, for you know, headlines. And those days are gone now. Um, a lot of brands haven't found ROI, they're just you know, not, not that interested anymore. But there's also a lot of organization that see the long-term potential to drive more sales, to, drive, to build a community, um, to sell more product, whatever it is, tangible, tangible value as we discussed with, with real estate. So if you want to get in the metaverse today, you have to figure out f what is the reason, how can you actually help your clients deliver more results. And it's not necessarily new results, it's business results, but you know, leveraging the metaverse as a, a unique channel to do things that other channels cannot do. So that's, that's the focus. I think we're entering the era of, of utility and of, of actual return investment. As a speculator, what about investment? Land price is weak. Uh, you know, is it buying, good buying opportunity now? I would say yes, generally for, for crypto, obviously not, not investment advice, but you know, we, we're not really speculators in the sense that we, we're more investors, like we have a, a part of our business called Land Vault Ventures, which is almost like an investment fund in, in virtual properties. So we own land in, in most of the top platforms. We bought that you know, a year ago, two years ago, and we're not really like speculating at all. I don't think we've sold a single plot. We just bought it, and now we are renting it to brands, organizations who want to build in that specific area. So you get yield off of the uh, land as well, yeah? We get yield off, yeah. We're renting the land for probably half of our projects require land. Some brands already have land or build on platforms that do not need it. But we have prime location in, you know, Sandbox, in Decentraland, in Somnium Space. So if a brand wants to be in, you know, in... Uh, Fifth Avenue, uh, the equivalent of Fifth Avenue, because their competitors are there. This is where there's the most traffic. Then, and they don't want to acquire land because the prices are going up and down, and you need the right crypto, and it's kind of complicated to buy. You can just rent it from us from a, a flat dollar fee as part of the contract, 
you don't need to deal with crypto, with the custodian of the land, and uh, you can get the project started really, really quickly. That's amazing. And just final point was that uh, Dubai is obviously uh, making a big push into the uh, metaverse. Can you just quickly touch on that? Well, that's the reason we're here, right? Dubai wants you know, to bring real jobs in the metaverse to drive actual, actual businesses, actual value. They want to be the first one. I feel like they, their vision is really to be the, the Silicon Valley of Web3, like I say. Yeah. Um, so for me, you know, to running a construction company in the metaverse, it just makes sense to be in the right area where the right people are, the right kind of investors are. So this is why we made a move here and we already have a few commercial projects in real estate and events. And um, yeah, we, we see this region as a, a safe bet for the next 10 years as we keep building the company. Hey Sam, I wanted to find out a bit more about uh, Matera protocol as well. Yeah, so we're building, a, we're building our own protocol. This is part of our, our tech stack. And Matera basically aims to be the HTTP equivalent for the metaverse. So we found that, you know, right now there is a lot of different platforms that we discuss, right? Some of them are on chain, like Sandbox, Decentraland. Some of them are not on chain, like Roblox. And those platforms do not really communicate. So, you know, we believe that the metaverse is the future of the internet, but you need to have only one internet, not multiple versions that are completely separated from each other. So instead, what we decided to do to accelerate that is to build a protocol where basically you can build with any tool, you can build with Unity, with Unreal, um, and then deploy content in that space using Matera. And because all the content, no matter where you build it from, will be built on the same protocol, it will be communicating with each other. So it's a way to create interoperable content and basically host it at, at scale to create this one, one fabric of the, of the open metaverse. Our vision is really that the metaverse shouldn't be a platform, but should be a protocol that others can build on top of, just like the internet. So this is what Matera is, and every new build that we're doing, new projects, is automatically deployed on that, um, on that framework, so that eventually all the different builds can actually communicate with each other, uh, similar to an HTTP link you know, between, between different websites. Sam, thanks very much for today. Learn a lot about uh, building in the metaverse and uh, the future of the metaverse. Thank you, Cointelegraph Arabic readers. Was it, uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video and found it uh, useful. Please follow us.